Hey guys, um, yeah, this is going to be another in-box review. Uh, this is one I've been waiting for for ages, and now I've got one. Um, everybody's, well, there's a few modelers out there have been doing in-box reviews of this, but uh, I thought I'd put my full Penneth in. <coughs> I've been seeing it, the first one I saw was of Phil Flores, and he said it's a little gem of a kit, and I have to say, I'm in total agreement with him, because I had a look at this the other day, and it's a little beauty of a kit. It's a total retool of their old Buccaneer. And I'm glad they've done it. And apparently, um, come Telford, which is just under a week away now, um, <clears throat> Airfix are going to do another retool reveal on the Saturday around about 11 o'clock. So that's going to be exciting because I'm actually going to be there on Saturday. Um along with my brother Neil, so, um, yeah, um, happy days, um, so, yeah, I didn't know if I was going to get to Telford this year, but lo and behold, um, I've now re um, renewed my IPMS membership, and so is he, and, uh, we're going on Saturday, um, so, if you see us, um, come and say hello, um, I mean, I'll be catching up with some of the guys I know in the community up there anyway, and some I haven't seen in a while, because I've not been there in two years, <coughs> because obviously last year I couldn't afford to go to the Christmas party with my friend Brittany and do Telford at the same time, uh, so this year I made a point that I was going to go, um, so there you go. Um, but uh, I've had a little bit of a setback before we, this in, we do this inbox review in regard to the USS Dallas uh, as I was doing the detail paint work this afternoon uh, mixing up the paint and then I slightly dropped it and it splattered all over my bench and not only the bench but the Dallas as well um, which you can see there and in all that work I did has gone to waste so I'm now going to have to reprime the whole damn thing and start all over again uh, which is an absolute pain in the butt because I was getting near to the end stage of doing the detailed paint work on this <coughs> uh, but salt's law prevailed again I mean, I've got a bloody great splat right there so I'm going to have to reprime it all in black mask it all off again separately and do it all again so unfortunately the uh, finish of this kit is going to be a little bit delayed, but there you go. Um, but it's nothing I can't rectify. As regards to Panzer II, well that's all primed including the figures and the base. And I'm going to start the base painting on that this week, so there you go. Um, anyway, getting back to the review at hand, uh, when I announced this I thought there's no way in hell I'm not going to get one. Um, because I love the era uh, that this was depicted in with the old Art Royal uh, in her final years. Uh, that's the old flat top conventional aircraft carrier Art Royal. I think it was the fourth uh, ship to bear the name. Um, and served us uh, from 1955 until 1978. And she was finally scrapped in around about 1980. Uh, sad to say because she was the last of her kind and I personally feel that uh, she should have been preserved as a museum ship which was the plan in progress because there was a group of people that were planning to raise the funds but lo and behold a scrap man got you there first sadly but there you go um, but this is the era I remember of the old Buccaneers and Phantoms, Gannett, Wessex and Sea King. Um, and if anybody remembers the name uh, series Sailor, that was the era. So there you go. <coughs> anyway, as you can see from the box art as depicted here, it's a typical scene of one of Ark's uh, Buccaneers landing on a deck with the arrest of Wire down. Uh, Aircraft code number 021. Um, this is depicted with the earlier roundel. So this is in the early years of Art Royal's refit. Uh, when she was phantomized, as it were. Um, and she served on um, for the last 
oh, I think it was about eight years when HMS Eagle was decommissioned and used as spares to keep Ark going. Um, but the ironic thing was that Eagle was in a far better condition to be modernised than Ark Royal was. Uh, but the government of the day decided that Eagle was not going to be modernised and that Ark Royal would be the last of her kind. So there you go. Um, they did have another conventional carrier. Uh, I think it was going to be a nuclear one, CVA-01, which was going to take over, but that got cancelled. And then we ended up with the through-class cruiser, uh, the Invincible class, with the Sea Harrier after um, Hart was um, retired some two years later. So there you go. Anyway, moving on, we'll get on to the review of this kit and if anybody wants to get hold of one of these, I would tend to get them quick because they are selling hot and fast and I'm sure Airfix will bring out another version of this, probably the RAF version. Um, well, they normally do, but we'll see. Maybe that's what the actual uh, announcement's going to be, but we shall see. Um... To be honest, I would love it if they brought out a Gadget or even uh, the Sea King in A24 Squadron's markings. So there you go. We shall see. We shall see. Um, anyway, I'm waffling on and I shouldn't be. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm a bit enthusiastic about this era of the fleet air on, but there you go. Um, Anyway, um, the Buccaneer in general was introduced into Royal Navy service around about 1962 uh, to replace the then C, um, I think it was the Scimitar. Um, it was, and the first version we had uh, Rolls Royce Gyron Junior engines in it, but they were rather underpowered. And around about 1965, the um, S2 um, came into service. And they finally retired the S1s in around about 1970. And the Buccaneer soldered on with 809 Squadron um, after 800 Squadron when the Eagle was disbanded uh, for the last um, seven to eight years of Art Royal service. Alongside 89, was it 892 Squadron's Phantoms uh, or the Omega Squadron, of which Airfix also do a retool this kit and I am actually awaiting that to come in but for some reason um, the supplier sent me the wrong kit and I did get on to them and they said we were going to send out another one the other week and it still hasn't arrived so I think I'm going to have to get on to them for a refund somehow and I might pick one up at Telford but we'll see anyway um, with this kit you get the option of doing two versions you've got the familiar 809 squadron from HMS Art Royal and Eagles 800 squadron um, Buccaneer with the big E on the tail there and the uh, red flash. Uh, so there you go. That's your two options. Kit number is A06021. A06021. So there you go. <clears throat> and it's a quite a big box for a 72nd scale uh, aircraft, but. Yeah, it's about the same size as the actual Phantom as well, but there you go. Um, on the side here, you've got all the various warnings in the various languages, etc. Um, then you've got the box art illustration on the end here. And on the other end, as I say, a little bit of history about the buck, um, as you can see here. And then obviously you've got the two colour options there as well. Okay. Anyway, without further ado, I'll open this box, which is a bit tight, I have to say. Let's get open. And we'll have a look at the kit inside. Um, if you just bear with me. Yeah, it's quite snug. So, as I say, I haven't actually fully unsealed it on the have now. <laughs> the box lid's just come off. Oh well, hey ho. Um, Let's move that out of the way. In, inside you've got one big bag with all the sprues in it, as you can see there. And we'll go through those in a moment. First off, we've got the instruction sheet in the familiar pamphlet. Uh, 
style and then a little instruct a little history of the Buccaneer there as you can see and it's in one two three four different language or well, five different languages um whoops hang on I nearly lost my decals then um let's move the box out of the way there we go and then basically as I say, you got it in a pamphlet style, which is now familiar, and with the little red illustrations here. Uh, more comprehensive than the old instruction sheets. There's all your warning signs during the construction of the kit. And then the first off is, as per usual, uh, the assembly of the cockpit with the cockpit seats that you can see here. Uh, the only thing they've got missing is the pool ring, so I might well see if I can get to an aftermarket for that. But in general, it's quite highly detailed, I have to say. And then obviously you've got the front nose wheel gear bay that goes underneath the cockpit section. You've got the rear wall, main cockpit tub there goes together. Seats go in and you've got decals which can go on the side panels there. Okay. And then you've got the... <coughs> looks like a head-up display for the navigator section there. And then you put decals in there as well. And then once that's done, you basically put the cockpit tub in two, in half, and then add the two outer shells of the fuselage together. As you can see here, and then obviously you've got the main control panel for the pilot there with a head-up display and decal. And it also advises you to put 15 grams of weight in the nose, obviously before you put that, otherwise it becomes a tail sitter. You've got the front part cockpit coving, which goes down. And then you're looking at the option with the wings here, whether you want it folded or not, and where to cut them off. And obviously you've got to drill out where the hard points are going to go for your weapons. Okay. Then you've got the assembly in the lower part of the fuselage with the fan blades and the main spar, which go in. Um, and then the build-up of the inner sections, which you can see here for the wee undercarriage bays. Um, the main undercarriage part. And you've got the assembly of the jet nozzles, put them inside, and then you've got the rear wall for the jet assembly as well. And then you've got the air intakes to assemble along with the um, blades, air inlet blades, which you can see there. They go inside the upper part fuselage, or is it the lower part? Beg your pardon. Then you drill out a hole for one of the um, airspeed indicators. Up a fuselage goes down. And then if you want the wings folded, you've got detail for the wing fold on the side which Airfix have actually thought of, which they don't do in a lot of models these days because you normally have to get aftermarket if you want a wing fold set. And again, you've got part of the wing fold set here if you want the wings down, which obviously is carried and shows in the undercarriage bay. It's a nice level of detail there, guys. And they obviously tend to drill the hard point in there for more uh, lumps and bumps, which go on the back of the fuselage spine. And then the upper fuselage spine goes down. The upper part of the outer wing goes down on both sides. Okay. And then you've got the assembly of the rear tail, including the rear unit for the air brake. Okay, because obviously the air brake used to splay open, um, as you can see there. And then you've got the workings of the inner nozzles and exhausts, which go into the fuselage on either side. Nose goes onto the main fuselage, and then you put the outer part of the air intake on both sides. Um, main tail plane goes on to the tail and then the upper ECM pod goes on along with the rear rudder and the rudder housing which you can see there as well okay see that guys cool okay and hang on. let me just see then you put the housing for the rear um, tail hook uh, onto the lower part of the back of the fuselage and this is in case you want, basically want the air brake open. Okay. And that's your air brake there, which goes on to the mechanism, etc. 
there you go um, in fact I think I might have the air brake open on this version so it's hooked down on the deck so that might be an either well, something to think on anyway because I think with the Phantom uh, I'm going to do it so it's on its waist cap ready to launch so yeah I saw somebody actually do that in the Airfix magazine about a year ago it looked really impressive so there you go and you can see you've got all the detail on the air brake which is very nicely done or you can have it shut as you can see there and also you've got the rotating bomb bay um, you can have that on or off and you've got the detail beside the end walls there for the bomb bay um, and then some of the flap goes onto the wing which you can see there and on the opposite side and then you cut part the actual it looks like undercarriage piping where the I suppose that would be where the hydraulic fluid goes through I'm not sure um, and then you've got the rear part of the housing for the tail hook which goes on more lumps and bumps go on the front of the actual nose wheel bay etc and then you've got your pitot tube which goes on hard point rear part of the wing end here same on the other side and then you've got the assembly of the main undercarriage unit which you can see here and the nose wheel as well and you've got another part of the undercarriage leverage system for the nose wheel goes on and you can see the positioning there and then you've got the undercarriage bay door which goes on again you've got the assembly of the main undercarriage units there and it's showing you the positioning of how it should sit okay and on the opposite side again very comprehensive instructions on this so well done airfix and then obviously you've got the um, positioning of how the actual gear bay door goes on etc and then obviously your tail hook goes on um, etc and I think the last thing that uh, you have to do is obviously you can put the crew in if you want <coughs> The fueling nozzle goes on and you've got a rear windscreen for the Buccaneer which you can see there which is a well known feature of the Buck and then obviously your canopy goes on and then you've got the refuel you've got the wing tanks which are assembled the Martra um, missile system there bombs uh, depends on what sort of load you want to put on there and what it's depicting really um, and then again pitot tube goes on and obviously you've got the placement of the decal there I would advise putting these on after you've actually painted and decaled it otherwise you're going to have a devil of a job to put the decals on okay so that's that done and again this is showing the position of the wings in case you want it as though it's we've got the wings folded okay so that is basically the Buccaneer now colour call outs First off, you've got a sheet for all the stencil placement, which you can see here, so that's going to keep you busy. Okay, so there you go. I'll probably do them first, actually. And then you've got the colour call-outs. Uh, first option, You've obviously got the aircraft that was embarked on HMS Eagle, 800 Squadron HMS Eagle, June 1971, which I think was her last commission. Um, so there you go. And I quite like this um, this tail marking with the big E and the uh, red um, sort of arrow going through it. I think if I get another one of these, that's the one I'm going to do it in, actually. Um, so there you go. And again, on the back of the actual air brake, you've got the aircraft number, 12. So there you go. And on the opposite side, you've got the second option, which is probably more than likely the option I'm going to do, which is of 809 Naval Air Squadron, HMS Art Royal, January 1972. But I'm going to use different rounders as though it's on its last commission from 70, well, from the air from 75 to 78 actually because I've got some spare um, roundels which are the blue and red ones and again even on the bomb you've got a colour guide there as well so that's very nicely done so that's that really 
Now let's have a look at the crux of this and that's the kit parts themselves. Now I've already um I think I've already unsealed this. Oh no I haven't actually so we're gonna open this up for the first time. I'm gonna have a look at this for the first time. Oh, I've seen that everybody else enthused about how well these this kit is moulded and the detail on it, so we shall find out for ourselves. Right, so basically We've got one, two, three, four, five, and about six screws, including the clear parts. So, let's put that over there in a minute. What I'm going to do first is go through the main sprues. And I have to say, guys, I am mightily, mightily impressed with the detail on this, um, particularly this section here and where you've got the housing for the actual air brake and even the seats. The level of detail on that is absolutely exquisite. I mean, they really have done their research. I mean, admittedly, the crew, oh, well, standard air fix crew, as you can see there. There you go, that's if you want to get the crew in. I don't think I'm going to have the crew in, to be honest with you. And the actual seats, as you can see here, not bad, not bad at all. And it's very authentically actually cast. Um, nose wheel bay, nose wheel gear is nicely done. That is your, I think, rear brake housing, I'm not sure. You've got the cockpit panel here, but obviously you can have a main decal there to go on there. Um, this I quite like, I think, is part of the bomb bay with the detail of the wires and everything. Very nicely caught, guys. It is beautiful. There you go. And this is the rear wall for the, ca uh, for the canopy. Very nicely done. And that's part of your wing fold uh, interior. Again, beautifully caught. And that will come up lovely with a wash. And there's part of the actual, I suppose, that's the hydraulic piping going through the undercarriage. Uh, they really have done their research on this. And I mean, it's beautifully done. There's part of the navigator's panel. So there's that nicely done. Yeah, very nice. I am impressed, I have to say. Very impressed at all. The only thing I, hmm, I haven't got any, well, we haven't even got any weld marks on it yet, he says. <laughs> there you go. Hmm, very impressed. Um, put that on the side. Um, this section is the actual. Tanks and weapons. I have to say the actual tanks, the detail on those with the panel lines is beautifully done. Absolutely. Very nicely done. Even the Marshall rocket system, very nicely caught as well. Hard points have got some nice detail with the panel lines on them. Very nicely done. Um, and even the bombs. Nice level of detail on those as well, if you can see it, guys. And then even on the actual undercarriage, uh, well, I wouldn't say undercarriage, the Bombay doors, nicely caught. Very nice. This is going to build into a little beauty, this is, I can tell you. Right. And then we got some of the main actual bulkheads and spars and air brake system. Um, obviously, you've got the front part of the cockpit area and fuselage. And again, beautiful panel line detail on it. I love the way they've caught the rivets on the here as well. Very nicely done. And then you've got the inner part of the actual exhaust system here. Uh, and then there's the rear part of where the actual um, I forgot the air, air blades are. And I love all the detail. Oh, hang on, sorry, it's out of focus. I love all the detail of the wiring around there as well. Beautifully caught. And this air brake, wow, look at that. Beautifully caught. And again, on here, the main spar, 
nicely done um, and this is part of the wing fold unit for the actual wings if you want the wings down you'll see this on the undercarriage bay nicely done again love it absolutely love it and even on the interior you've got sidewall detail nicely done um, and even the interior of the actual main undercarriage units look at that <laughs> wow <laughs> beautiful right and then we're coming on to the outer part of the brake air brake which you can see here which you have obviously to have open or closed again nice panel line details on them and there's your cockpit tub I mean obviously there's no real detail and it's all done with decals so for your <coughs> um, indicators etc on there and then there's the main part of your undercarriage legs which you can see there nicely done again and then you've got the um, air fan blades there for the engines those are all spay engines beautiful detail on that that'll come up nicely with the wash as well and then you've got your nose wheel bay minimal detail mind you there was minimal detail on the real thing so there you go uh, and even the wing units look at that let's get it into focus lovely panel line detail on that uh, yeah very nicely done oh, I am well impressed with this kit I really am I mean I've sort of got in box of you actually got it in your hand and you're looking at it wow and then obviously you've got the main tail unit which you can see there and even the actual wheels um, and the nice detail on them as well now, I'm not sure if they've got a weighted flat spot on this I can't quite see if they have oh yes they have so that's good so yeah, again, look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, sorry, keep going out of focus. And even on the lower part, the fuselage and the wings and the bomb bay, wow, look at that. Beautifully moulded. And I love the detail they've caught on the interior part of the actual undercarriage bay as well with the wiring. Beautiful. Upper part of the wing again, nice panel line detail with the <coughs> wing outlets, as you can see there, which was a familiar feature of the Buccaneer S2, and the upper part of the fuselage spine beautifully done. And there's your tail uh, unit as well, and then obviously, you've got the tail hook unit there as well, nicely caught, beautifully done. Oh, I'm really impressed with this, I have to say. It's a lovely, lovely looking kit. Um, it's not surprising they're selling fast if they're this good. And then obviously the last part we've got, which I'm not going to take out of the bag, is the actual cockpit tub, um, canopy tub. And then obviously you've got the rear part for the uh, navigate, which you can see here. And it's beautifully done. And obviously they've left the um, edge of the wings clear for when you put the actual landing lights on it. Lovely. And even the head-up display is perfectly clear on this as well. I am well impressed. Lovely easy masking on that. So there you go. Right. Now, next part and the final part I'm going to show you. <coughs> Get back in the box. Hang on. There's obviously the decals. Again, they're made by carpet grass, so they won't have any problems going down. And they're nice and clear, nice and subtle. There's all your stencils, which you've got all in there. Cockpit and panel line detail for the interior of the cockpit. Your roundels, which is not the ones I'm going to use. I'm going to use the blue and um, red ones. Um, and then obviously you've got your unit markings, the familiar uh, Phoenix sign for the 809 Squadron, which you can see there. And this lovely E with the arrow, with the red arrow through it. And obviously you've got the 809 Squadron, 800 Squadron crest there. But yeah, very nicely done, guys.
Yep, overall, I have to say, this is an I'm in total agreement with Phil Flory. This is a little gem of a kit. And uh, I look forward to, as and when I build it, um, I know a lot of the guys on YouTube are building them already. Uh, I know Harry Houdini's doing a build on this at the moment. Um, but yeah, she is a beaut. Um, I'm glad I got one in this stash. Let's just put it like that. And I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and wondering when they were going to bring out a retool. And I have to say, I am not disappointed uh, one bit. It is a little gem of a kit. And uh, I can't look. I can't. I can't wait to build it. To be honest with you. Um, yeah, that's about all I can say on this kit. I mean, as I say, if you can get hold of one, damn well do. I mean, they probably have tons of them at Telford, and they're probably going to go like hot cakes uh, first thing in the morning. <laughs> I'd be surprised. I wouldn't mind betting this is the top seller for Airfix a kit range at the moment. Um, but yeah, as I say, they are actually um, going to do a rebuttal announcement. So maybe it's going to be the RF variant, the Buccaneer, that they're going to announce. I hope so. Either that or the long-awaited retool of the Vulcan. Ooh, now there's something to think about. So there you go. Anyway, uh, that's it for now, guys. Um, so until the next time, get kit crazy, happy modelling, and I will speak to you soon.